Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Well, everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. We have a brand new show, and we're going to kick things off above the bridge and show you what goes into a hare hunt in the Upper Peninsula. You won't want to miss that. Then I'm going to head down to the southern part of our state, actually just a few miles from the border, for a really big ice fishing tournament that just happened this past weekend in Hillsdale County. We're also going to have time for a bragging board on this week's show, so lots of good stuff. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by country smokehouse a sportsman's meat processor and michigan destination since 1988 offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and michigan made products in store and online the Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at CountrySmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at LakeEffectLures.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, PolarCraft.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, AnglerQuestPontoons.com. Yeah, so here we are. We're, uh, we're in Marquette County, Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Um, we're going to be running snowshoe hair today. Um, we're going to have my two dogs. We got my older dog on the right there, and that's Snake. And then we got uh, Buck on the left, seven and a half year old and uh, two and a half year old. And you can hear there that they're, uh, they're fired up, they're into it. Um, we do this all winter long. I'm um, actually a fourth generation uh, beagler. Um, we've always just kind of had one or two around home, and we pretty much grew up running cottontails down in uh, southwest Michigan. And when I moved to the UP here for work, um, it wasn't long before I bought beagles on my own and I really got into the snowshoe hair thing. Majority of the um, you know rabbits we have up here in Michigan, uh, in Michigan's Upper Peninsula is snowshoe hair. So that's what we're running up here and we're going to get them on the ground. There's one other guy coming out. Should be good. We're hoping to get some some good run and this is a really good spot for us. Um, we've been running here for quite a few years. Um, they've been running here. This camp that we hunt out of, they've been running here for generations and generations. And uh, a lot of jack pine plantations around here um, and that 20 to 35 year old jack pine is really, really good cover for these snowshoe hair. And this particular plantation we're in is around 40 to 60 acres, and it backs up um, to a swamp and a river. So not only do they have the jack pine for cover, they also have the swamp area. So we should, it shouldn't be long before we should get some rolling here. It didn't take the dogs long to get on a hare, but getting the camera in the right spot was proving to be pretty difficult. But as we waited for the dogs to make another circle, we were surprised by a different hare sneaking through the pines. That 
What's the problem with hunting and filming? Did he get away? I don't know. Throw a prayer in there. I saw him come in there, but then I couldn't see him after he got yeah. behind it. Just as I was trying to get in better position to see the hair with the camera, it took off. And although Coulter did get a couple of shots, this one got away. We hunted for a little while longer and called it a night, with plans to meet up in a few days to try it again. During that time, the weather changed and added about a foot of fresh snow to the landscape. This hunt started at a small cabin tucked way back into the UP wilderness, where I'd be tagging along with Coulter and a few other hunters as well. Central Marquette County, Upper Peninsula. Um, this is, the camp is called Hort's Hideaway. So the camp was originally built in either the late 40s or early 50s by my dad. He passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but the camp was originally built then, but then it burnt down in 1978. Um, actually, when the guys were here rabbit hunting, they put wood in the fire and a spark got out and the camp burnt down when they were rabbit hunting. But then this camp was built in 1978. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite place in the world. Um, we do a lot of hare hunting here in the winter and grouse hunting in the fall, deer hunting in, in late fall into early winter. So uh, just a great group of members here. We've got 10 or 12 guys that come pretty often to hunt. Uh, and we sometimes uh, fish for brook trout out of this camp too. After learning more about the camp, we looked at some old photos and swapped a few stories before loading up and heading out. The weather conditions were less than ideal for the dogs, but we were hoping for the best as this area is home to some incredible habitat for snowshoe hare. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna just walk into a stand. It's a large jack pine, red pine plantation, a mixed plantation. It's about 30 years old, but there's a lot of wind throw um, from the storm last year, which really creates great hare habitat, especially when those stands are starting to age out because they gotta have that low-lying conifer it's really important for snowshoe hare but but generally the up is very good habitat but not like it once was and that's because of the way we manage our forests primarily so if you have plantations because the survivorship in plantations is much better than it used to be because they're using containerized stock they're using a broader spacing in plantations hares require you know thousands of stems per acre just like grouse do in aspen Hares demand the same thing in conifer stands, either young jack, red pine stands, balsam fir, black, white, spruce. Um, so that's the prime habitat. We don't have that much habitat anymore. And as you know, in the northern lower peninsula, hare numbers are not what they once were. So, um, and a lot of people don't pay attention to that. And you know, I wish they would. I wish we'd spend more time managing for low-lying conifer for snowshoe hare and many other game and non-game wildlife species depend on that particular habitat type. As expected, the conditions were tough, but after a couple of hours of hunting, one of the guys managed to catch up with the elusive white ghost. Ty, my beagle, went in the woods and with all this fresh snow, it's kind of hard to get a track going and she's swimming in it because it goes right to the ground. And about 80 yards out, she started to bark. And watching her on the GPS, I knew she was coming right at us. And Coulter was about 80 yards away. And um, I saw a flash, and it stopped for me. So I didn't have to take a running shot. So a couple shots to knock it down and call it good for the day. It's been a tough one out here. Very tough, very tough, yep. Yeah, dogs are 80 yards, and you can barely hear them because all the snow on the trees. So and the wind and the cold, it makes it hard. Yeah, but good times as always. Great group of guys. Filming hare hunts can be pretty difficult, and that's something Coulter knows all about as he's been trying to film his own hunts over the last few years. I film um, for TKZ Outdoors, it's the kill zone. It was actually something that was started in 2009 in the Thumb of Michigan with a group of seven to nine guys, all family and friends. And, and one of those um, 
guys is one of my really good friends and coworkers up here in the UP. So I started to hunt with him, hang out with him. And, and I just kind of became interested in, in filming just because I thought it was a good way to, you know, kind of capture the experience. And I guess, you know, I, I love deer hunting. Um, I've, I'm a pretty decent deer hunter. I'm not a very good filmer of deer hunting. I've noticed I miss a lot of great opportunities, but I figured my niche and kind of in our, you know, we're not trying to get rich doing it. We're probably not, of course, but I, my niche and kind of this, you know, the TKZ outdoors has been the small game because I, I'm the most experienced one with it in the group and I have the dogs and I do it the most. So, and I really realized that, you know, and I've shot a lot of cottontail rabbits and I, already in the few years that I've been hare hunting, I've shot a lot of hare. So to me, it's becoming more and more important to just share that experience with others um, and, and less about me in particular shooting. You know, I love Harris getting shot because I think it is a you know awesome experience for, for new hunters and people to experience that. And it's really been cool to try to capture it on film. And it is very difficult to do, but I'm lucky enough to cap capture the moment. It's something that those people can take with them um, and they can view for, you know, hopefully forever. Deep snow, high winds, and frigid temperatures made for some tough hunting conditions, but it was still a fun couple of days above the bridge. Special thanks to Coulter, Kevin, and the rest of the crew for letting me tag along on a fun couple of days here in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Come up, come up, go. Well, when I was contacted about a really cool ice fishing tournament that was happening on Valentine's Day, I didn't really think many people would show up, but boy, was I wrong in Hillsdale County this past weekend. Well, we're just a few minutes from the, the takeoff of the Fifth annual Bobby's Open. You can see uh, everybody's anxious to get get started. The uh, this is second lake right in front of us. You, you're gonna see most of the fishermen take off uh, for second, then go through the marsh into third lake. It's fun when they start out because some guys get pretty excited, want to beat everybody the spot. You'll see some guys running. Some guys will put harnesses around their midsection and <laughs> and, and run. So it, it'll be pretty interesting at the start. How many years have you been doing this? I believe this is the fifth fifth year, and uh, we just ended up, we got 34 teams signed up today. Uh, we've been as high as, as 50, 60 teams in the past when the weather's a little warmer and it doesn't fall on right on Valentine's Day. But uh, Pretty good turnout for Valentine's Day. It, it is, and this, you know, it's even though it's an open and anybody can enter it, it's still, still part of our Branch County Panfish League, and we, we fish every weekend, so it, for the guys that are in the club, it's a, it's a points event too, so oh. they, they couldn't miss it. We're right towards the end of the season, so it's gonna count for a lot of points. And how many tournaments do you have? Uh, we, we had 10 scoring events this year. Wow, so that's a big it, deal. And there's some good fishermen in this club. I mean, there's guys that have fished on the clam pro circuit and that, that kind of thing, and um, we fish some, some really good lakes in Southern Michigan. So I, I expect some pretty good fish caught today, and then when we get back to the American Legion for the weigh-in, they have a fish contest and a fish board there too, so the guys can enter their fish on in both contests. Okay. So now can someone who's not part of the club come and fish this then? Or? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. We don't require a membership. People can come, come and go, but. Uh, if they fish three events during the year, then they qualify for the Classic Championship, which is next weekend. Okay. And then if you fish four or more, you qualify for the points. And the, the, what they do is they count your four best finishes for the year. Wow. And and then every week we have you know a, a bonus pots for you know big crappie, big perch, bluegill, pike. So okay. you know tip like like today you know to, total payout is is going to be you know probably a little over two thousand dollars between the pots. Wow. And you run all this through, you have an outdoor shop around here? Uh, yeah, I, I've owned Litchfield Outdoors for 22 years. I got involved with the club, the, uh, work with Alan Ebert and the Branch County Panfish Club. And okay. between the two of us, we've been able to kind of build it up. We, we've uh, we've had over 100 teams this year fishing the circuit. Wow. <laughs> so in our, in our points book, we've got like 102 teams. The first hour we plan on probably hole hopping quite a bit. And then we'll go from there. Once we find the fish, we can... Uh, We'll probably sit down and, and relax a little bit, okay. hopefully. Hopefully we can get on some fish here. And with the bluegill and crappie? Yep. We're doing bluegill, crappie, um, perch. There's a side pot for biggest pike. Okay. So hopefully we can get on some fish.
The day was much better than the forecast. It was in the teens today, but the sun was out and the wind wasn't too bad. It was pretty impressive to learn more about this ice fishing tournament trail. Um, so far this year, we've been to every one besides one of them. Huh. And then last year, we did all the tournaments last year. So it's been a pretty good pretty good year for us to get out of the house and, and enjoy what we like to do and be a little competitive on the side, too. Nice. And they're all kind of in this, this county, then? Yep. Hillsdale they're, county? They're, uh, they're all in Hillsdale County and Branch County. And it's basically just to get people out of the house and have fun. So hopefully, we had a pretty good turnout today. Hopefully it, it pans out for everybody. And how many fish does it take? To, you can weigh in how many? You can weigh in 15 bluegills, including okay. your big your big gill. And then you have the optional side pot of big crappie, big perch, um, and then the, the pike. You can put in for the pike too. Okay. I like to see each guy's individual ice fishing setups. Short poles versus long poles, electronics or no electronics. Today, Nate was telling me why he prefers wigglers in his setup. They, they kind of have their own action. You don't really have to jig them a whole lot. Um, they look like what the fish are eating, you know. They're, they're down there. They're a lot, uh, I don't know, they're not necessarily a larva, but they're, they're, they're real buggy. Obviously, they're pretty, pretty gross looking, but uh, they get the job done. Hmm. Um, yeah, like, I just throw them on a, on a little gold jig and hook them through the tail, and they just sit there and they just do their thing. Impart their own action, and they pretty much do the fishing for you, which is which is why I like using them, the convenience <laughs> of them. Hmm. But they work really well. And do do pretty good fishing with them. So, and do you fish with your brother in these tournaments then all the time, or you guys have different partners sometimes? Uh, well, we just started. Funny you say that. Most of the time we do fish. Me and my brother fish together, but my dad just started. Uh, getting back into ice fishing and so him and I have been spending spend some time together out on the lake and that's been real nice uh spending that time with my dad cool um but yeah for the most part it's just me and my brother out here fishing with so many guys in a rather small area it was fun to head from hole to hole to see how guys were doing and the setup that they prefer when trying to get some nice fish in the bucket Yeah, one of the guys in the pub makes these. Barry Williams does. Huh. He does the uh, spooky flies. He makes his own, own hand, hand tied flies, tungsten flies, and tungsten jigs, and all that stuff. He's from Brooklyn. He's, hmm. He does a good job. You like those short rods like that? Oh, I love them. Yeah. A lot better control. Hmm. A lot better feel. I see these guys using these four footers and stuff like that, and I just I don't like them. Hmm. Well, we were not setting the world on fire today, but we were finding some fish, but not any big fish. But what a great way to spend a day, out with buddies on the ice with some pretty steady action. Give the tape measure. The monster. Oh yeah. Giant stud. Oh, you crap. Giving the people what they want. <laughs> oh, that's a I got This is this will be our second year fishing these tournaments. Okay. Um, we did it last year just to try it out and see if we liked it, and we actually thoroughly enjoyed it. So we gave her another run this year, and we're not doing the greatest of points this year, but once again, it's all about getting out on the ice and having fun. And how'd you kind of get into fishing? Uh, my grandpa got us into ice fishing, and I took a couple years off to doing that, and then I just got the urge to get back on the ice and. In the last couple of years, I've went through everything from cheap rods and reels to expensive rods and reels, and you know, I just want to see how I do against local guys and, and how we stack up against everybody else. Gotcha. Nice. It's pretty fun. 
real fun. It's another reason to get out of the house. <laughs> Nate and Kyle did pretty good today. We had 15 fish that they were able to weigh in and had a nice mess of fish for the dinner table as well. The guys could fish till about 1 p.m. Then the crew started to head back to the trucks. It was a pretty good day overall, but from what these locals say, the fishing was slower than normal here on Bobby's Lake. Some good fish were caught, and now we were all headed to the local American Legion station that is also on the same lake. The Legion has a great place here, and as the fishermen started to trickle in, the weigh-in started. Now, like the guys mentioned, each team could weigh in 15 fish, plus the big fish categories as well. The Legion also had a big fish tournament going for the season, so you could see if you wanted to join in that while you were here as well. It really was a cool event here today. With around 10 weeks of this, it really has become quite a great overall event. It's just the excuse most guys need to get more time on the ice. Kyle and Nate took 15th place overall today with just over 30 teams. Congrats to Dave and the Branch County Panfish Club for putting on such a great event and encouraging all of us to spend more time on the ice here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or maybe last week's show, you can always check us out on our website. We have full episodes of the show there every week. We're also on the social media platforms if you want to see what we're doing on a more day-to-day -day basis. And make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. Lots of good stuff happening around the state of Michigan. Get out and enjoy this winter with all the good ice and a lot of snow in a lot of places. So much to do here in the great state of Michigan. And if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Showspan, producing sports shows such as the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit at the Suburban Collection Showplace with new dates for 2021, now being held March 25th through 28th. The Ultimate Fishing Show is now in March. 
by Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden the white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, East to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love 